guys and welcome back to the channel. For today's review we're going to be taking a throwback look at the Transformers The Last Knight Mission to Cybertron, Infernicus and Quintessa. One of the coolest figures I think we ever saw released for that Transformers 5 toy line. It was very similar to that of the EZ Collection Devastator that came out in 2009 and I remember back in the day wanting this set so much and I wasn't too sure whether or not us in the UK would get this considering that Toys R Us was just about to shut down. This was a Toys R Us exclusive but lo and behold around Christmas time of 2017 it did surface in the UK and I'm actually really glad to add this to the collection as Infernicus was such a cool looking Decepticon despite not having a ton of screen time and then being very easily killed off by Optimus as per tradition with the majority of those Bayverse Decepticons but overall definitely a pretty nifty box set. Now this was the only set or should I say only release to ever actually include Quintessa which was the main villain of Transformers 5 and overall this was a very nicely done figure. Surprisingly, this thing was completely in scale with some of the Voyager and Leader Optimuses that we saw as part of that Transformers 5 toy line. And overall, the detail looks so nicely done. Almost looks like a crystal, especially in terms of the plastic that they sculpted this in. But you can't have Quintessa without her bodyguard. And here we have what I imagine would be called the Infernicons, as I don't think they were quite Decepticons in their beast modes. Now, all of these, besides this center one, have alt modes, whereas this just has a robot and a combined form. So we'll set him here off to the side until we actually delve into the robot modes of these. I think these four were basically just repaints of a legend scale Abominus that had come out a few years back so they're not completely accurate to the movie but considering how little screen time this guy got in the film I don't think they're that bad at all so we'll just very quickly go over the details. Here we have this one which to be honest actually looks like he would fit right in with some of those Michael Bay characters especially with this really cool looking orange Mohican. I think he's one of my favorite in terms of a beast form. He looks really cool. I love the face sculpt that looks fantastic and he's actually quite a big chunky looking dude then we have what I can only describe as a two-headed dragon so yet again would fit right in with some of those Transformers 5 characters such as Dragon Storm I think the head and the neck on this looks cool basically all of them have just been cast in black plastic and have a few orange highlights so there's no dry brushing or anything of that nature but I think this one looks okay and then we turn to undeniably the ugliest thing out of this set and this is a complete abomination. This thing looks disgusting. I actually have no idea as to what it's supposed to resemble here when in beast form and I think I must be mistransforming it as surely this section here at the back isn't right. I just do not like this thing at all. I mean it kind of looks like a piranha but then it has this weird shell going on. I mean it's really really strange but I guess the head sculpt looks decent and then we turn to what I think is the best in the set besides the centerpiece, that being this dragon pterodactyl, and I really like the skull work here for the head. I think the beak looks terrific. The wingspan is actually pretty impressive for an almost legend slash core scale figure. I love the orange highlights. The burning orange that we have there looks so cool. So definitely a very nicely done looking release. Now I won't bore you guys with the transformation for any of these, so we'll just jump straight from their beast modes into their robot modes. Now I'm going to be completely honest and say that I don't think all of them are completely transformed as they really should be. Some of them have variations and I've looked online and some of the pieces end up in different places depending on what images and instructions etc you look at but I think this is close enough and in their robot modes besides this centerpiece I really don't think they're great so we'll just very quickly go through the details here of this one actually looking a little bit like Grimlock in terms of that head sculpt. I do like the way that's come out and I mean it's close enough to the Inferno I guess if you have these in the background they could pass off especially as far as their colors go Here we have that thing that looked like an absolute abomination in its beast mode And to be honest it looks a little better here in robot mode I do like the chest detail but still definitely not a hundred percent perfect I think my favorite out of the four reuses is definitely this one This dragon pterodactyl thing looks really nicely done. The head sculpt looks fantastic I do like the chest kind of reminiscent to swoop I guess if they really wanted to they could have maybe repainted this and retooled it into swoop from G1 and then here we have the two-headed dragon which also has got some decent sculpt work here for this mode. I do like how the actual dragon heads become the arms here for the robot mode. That's a pretty sweet reuse but the best undeniably out of the bunch has got to be the brand new mold that being this guy and wow for a legends slash core scaled figure this
this thing actually looks so cool. Very demonic in terms of design. I think that head sculpt just looks incredible. Really scary. We've got these massive horns. I like how the rib cage does actually conceal the combiner mode head. And overall, yeah, it had a few wonky proportions, but this is exactly more or less what the Infernicons looked like when they were transformed into their individual modes. So it is a shame that we're not seeing a set of five of these guys and instead the other four were just retools. But I guess overall, not a bad looking figure at all. He does actually come with two blades as these will form an almost staff weapon for him when in the combined mode. And this is a very thick, very well made figure. Definitely the best out of the bunch. Now in terms of a quick size comparison, here we have these Infernicons compared alongside a new core class Shockwave. And as you guys can see, at least this center one, it would definitely be classified as a core class by today's standards. It's a very big figure. Definitely, I'd say roughly eye to eye with this core Shockwave. But these other ones are just way too small. I think these are more along the lines of, I'd say, the Legion scale. I think that's what they used to call them. It's about, I'd say, half the size of Core Shockwave. So definitely a little cheaper feeling and cheaper looking when in comparison to the big guy. But of course, we've still got one mode left to go, that being Infernicus's combined mode. So as Megatron says in the Transformers 5 movie, Infernicus, transform and kill them. And to wrap things up, here we have Infernicus fully transformed up into his combined by mode. Undeniably the best look I'd say for all of these Infernicons, but even this isn't the greatest sadly, and it's still the reason why I'm praying that we can eventually see a Studio Series version of this in some way, shape, or form in the collection, just as this guy does leave a lot to be desired, and I think it's down to the simple fact that those four limbs are all reuses. They don't hold together the best, they don't look the best, and it really is that centerpiece which I think is the saving grace about this figure as a whole. Now as we just very quickly take a look here at the details, I mean yeah, this centerpiece still doesn't look amazing but it looks leaps and bounds better when in comparison to the rest of the figure and you have to bear in mind that this is only a core class basically in terms of scale so I really like the brand new demonic head that we have here for the combined form that looks really nicely done we've kind of got this silver 3d printing technology going on which I imagine was to kind of give it a dry brushed effect it looks okay not the greatest but the horns look really formidable I love the chest probably my favorite part about the bot mode we've got some nice Cybertronian hieroglyphs here for the top section. I really like the way this thing's come together and it kind of looks like the robot mode face is embedded slap bang in the center. So I thought that was pretty sweet. Now, as we come around here to the back, it's up to your own personal preference whether or not you close these rib cage pieces in or not. I like to flare them open. I think it looks a little more scary here from a front on perspective. And then we take a look at the other ones. And to be honest, I don't think they look the greatest. I mean, this thing's kind of a claw, but doesn't really look the best. And the legs are absolutely abysmal. I'm going to be honest. These things not only do they not like to stay together but they just look terrible and you can't really get this guy into many poses which is a shame considering that the character in the movie was an absolute beast in terms of a combiner now this one doesn't look too bad we do get this massive saw blade which I don't think he ever actually used in the film if memory serves me correctly he had these massive cannons so yet again definitely hoping for an eventual studio series version of this guy but in terms of just a standing on the shelf I guess it's the best option that we have at the moment and I'm hoping that in a couple of years time it will be made redundant by a new version. Now here for a comparison we have Infernicus compared alongside that tiny Quintessa. Here we have him next to a core class Shockwave and I'd say that this is roughly exactly how the scale was in the movie. Say Shockwave is around about the height of Optimus this is how Optimus kind of paired alongside Infernicus so as you begin to bring in some of those normal mainline scale figures such as here a Voyager Studio Series Prime these don't scale nicely at all but what you can say is that here in this combined form this is just a standalone robot of the combiner. You know when Optimus stabs his sword through the head and all of them transform into their own individual robots? I'd say those individual robots would be roughly this scale to Optimus. So I guess if you want to look at it that way, it could work. But if you're thinking of this as the actual combiner, then no, you can completely forget about it as he's way too small. And then finally, for a newer comparison, here we have him alongside Hot Rod and he's stopped the time gun. So yeah, I mean, it looks like a pretty sweet looking Decepticon to compare alongside our Autobot. And then for one final comparison, here we have him alongside the Easy Collection Devastator, which just as a whole is a way better combiner. But you guys can see that Infernicus is actually quite a bit bigger than this Devastator. So overall, I think that just about wraps up this throwback look. It wasn't so much a review. I just basically wanted to get this guy over on the channel as it's a pretty sweet entry into the Transformers 5 toy line. And it was something that up until Transformers 5, we didn't really get much of in terms of live action movie figures. Of course, it's massively flawed, mainly 
down to the fact that they reused four combiners from a pre-existing combiner which didn't quite match how Infernicus appeared in the film but that centerpiece looks terrific and I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comment section below and it also came with a pretty cool version of Quintessa. Now I am trying my best to push more throwback reviews over on the channel so if there is a specific character or figure you guys would like me to take a look at in the next episode be sure to let me know down in the comment section below and as always I thank you all so much for watching until my next review I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.